Trump also taking to Twitter to tout record growth in the second quarter and to warn that people can expect the economy to plunge if Joe Biden is elected in November. So what effect will Biden's economic plan have on the nation? With me now is former special assistant to President Trump, Kelly Sadler. Kelly, good to have you. Kelly, I want you to take a look and have our audience take a look at these states losing residents by tremendous numbers. The one thing they have in common are high tax rates. And that's the wonderful thing about this country as we celebrate our, our anniversary of our founding is that it is, it is a bunch of little experiments. We have 50 experiments going on about what works and what doesn't work. And the high tax states seem to be proving that high taxes don't work. They absolutely do. And Joe Biden would be a disaster. The president is right for our economic recovery post COVID-19. He already said that he was going to repeal the Trump tax cuts. We know the Obama Biden years uh, basically was devastating towards manufacturing jobs uh, and that Joe Biden voted for NAFTA. He voted for permanent trade relations with China. And then what happened 20 years later, this country lost 4 million manufacturing jobs. And then they said those jobs simply aren't coming back. And we got to wave our magical wand. Joe Biden has a disastrous economic record, whereas this president has cut taxes, is for deregulation. He's unleashed the energy sector, a sector that Joe Biden said he was going to ban all fossil fuels, which would lead to 600,000 job losses in Pennsylvania alone. These, these policies would have a disastrous effect on our right. economy. Well, and Kelly, you bring up a great point, because uh, while, while if a state raises taxes, uh, somebody or a business can move to a different state, yeah. uh, if it's done on a federal level, you can't move to a different state. You're stuck with it, so you move out of the country. And we saw that happen during the Obama-Biden years. We saw this tr tremendous exodus out of the country. Places like Ireland, for example, have yes. a very low corporate tax rate. If we raise those corporate taxes back up to a level that is much higher than the international average, we're going to have another exodus of, of not just individuals, but whole companies who are going to be taking their jobs overseas again, are we not? Absolutely. I mean, part of the Trump tax cuts, what it did was it tried to repatriate uh, money and repatriate these companies back to American shores. And what we're seeing, there's many bills in Congress now, and the president supports tax incentives to companies to bring their supply chains back to America. This is now a national security issue with COVID-19. Let's get our supply chains out of China and encourage right. businesses to bring back this uh, manufacturing to the United States, which Joe Biden just doesn't seem to care about. Well, you mentioned you mentioned COVID-19, and mm -hmm. as you well know, we are in the midst of some sparks again that, that are taking off in mm -hmm. certain states that have been reopening. They're, they're closing down again, not entirely, but they are yeah. closing down. Uh, and you have even, even states like New York, where you don't have the this, this spike going on, you have scared politicians like, like Mayor de Blasio announcing that he's not going to be opening as he said he'd be. I'm just wondering that the fact that there it did last uh, jobs numbers were incredible. Uh, tomorrow we get more jobs numbers. I'm just wondering, though, if the reclosings are going to prevent that, that V recovery that uh, Larry Kudlow and others are hoping for. Well, the president said that he would not, at the national level, advocate for closing states back down again. And we are going to have. Yeah, but he's to not. As, forgive me, Kelly, for interrupting. Know, but he's I not know. responsible he's not, for that. It's responsible. that's that's going to be the job of the governors, and and a lot of those governors are reclosing. Well, if you look at New York State, for example, five percent of New York City's population fled during the COVID-19 crisis. Now, that's according to a Forbes analysis. Are those residents going to go back to New York City? New York is already facing a $13 billion statewide deficit. Uh, we don't need Andrew Cuomo, no offense, he doesn't need people fleeing from his state. He needs people in his state to pay their taxes, which he'll probably raise because of COVID-19. These are bad economic decisions. We as a nation know how to deal with COVID. We need to wear masks. We need to socially distance. We need to wash our hands and small businesses can implement these to keep their, you know, workers safe. We're going to have to live with this disease until there is a vaccination. And the 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 because the result, the alternative is devastating right. economically and it would have devastating effects across America. Kelly, um, we, we, we have to go for forgive me for interrupting, but I just have about 15 seconds. Will the election uh, be a referendum in part on whether the country should reopen or close down again. 
I think this election is going to come down to the economy and who's best suited to lead the recovery, and that's President Trump. Kelly, great to see you again. Kelly Sadler, thank you for coming in. Appreciate it. Have a good Independence Day weekend. And we want to alert everybody, by the way, to a special programming note Thursday, July 9th at 1 p.m. Eastern Time.